Hi, this is Chris Wall at The Wall Network, and today I'm going to go a little bit deeper into the UCS Platform Emulator. Now, if you haven't seen part one of this series, I'd recommend go ahead and view that video because it kind of goes into the introduction of what the Platform Emulator is. And in this video, which is part two, I'll cover a little bit deeper into the emulator settings and the hardware inventory, as well as some of the points that you just can't do with the emulator so that you understand what your constraints are. So to begin, I'm going to go to the hardware inventory on my platform emulator control panel. All I did was I brought up a secure web page with the IP of my virtual machine that's running the emulator. It brings you to this screen. And if I click on hardware inventory, there's the startup inventory under here. I covered that a little bit in the last video. In this one, I want to point out some of the more kind of advanced features. So I'm going to, I'm going to hide the little hardware bin at the bottom here. We'll be focusing on these little widgets right here. Now most important to me is there's a folder with a little paper icon to load save configurations and there's a paper with a little disk head on it to save configurations. Now that's important to me because if I click on load you can see there's a bunch of different configurations kind of already here that you can use and I'm using one called wall network. I've, I've kind of built UCS the way that I want it and if for some reason I needed to switch between kind of my demonstration view of UCS, which I have open now, and any of these other built-in sample configs or even this lab config that I use for working with labs for kind of hypothetical situations, I can quickly toggle back and forth. I don't have to rip and replace hardware. Uh, so basically you just build out exactly what you want here with your chassis and hardware and servers and whatnot. Then you click on this paper with the disk icon, you put a name here. I will show you though, you can't use the same name unless you go and delete the prior config. So wall network's already a name that's taken. If I try to save as wall network, it will give me an error saying that it exists. And to get around that, just go to the load screen here. And when I hover over something, there's a little negative sign next to it. It's kind of hard to get to unless you, you know, hover over it and then kind of drag to the right. I could do that to get rid of this other config. I don't want to get rid of it, so I'm going to say no. But that's how you could remove it and then save over it, so to speak. Additionally, I've purposely goofed up this config to show you a way you can validate the config. So let me hide that again. There's a check a checkbox here that says validate the config. Now if I click on that, it's telling me that pretty much everything looks good. The chassis are fine, the blades are fine, and oops, blade server, chassis two, server number one, that's how you read that. Chassis 2 Server 1 doesn't have any RAM or hard drives or CPU. I'm going to let that slide and kind of show you what it looks like to power up the emulator with such a gross misconfiguration. So, because you could potentially slide a blade in there that's missing all this hardware. And this may be you want to understand what that would look like. You know, what happens if you forget to slide the DIM chips into the server? We will soon find out. But that's the way you can make sure that you didn't, you know, goof up any of your configs on the servers. And if you want to get back, you can just re-click on startup inventory, and now we're right back where we started. So it told me chassis 2, server 1's missing hardware. Here's chassis 2, and if I expand servers uh, by clicking the green little plus sign, blade 1, yeah, it doesn't have any CPU, memory, any of that stuff. If I click on server uh, slot 4, we can see it's got a CPU, it's got DIMMs an adapter, hard drive, but slot one, this server here just has nothing. So it's legit telling me that that's a bad config because I, you know, potentially I forgot to put it in here. I'm purposely trying to show what it looked like if you accidentally, you know, goofed and forgot. So let's launch the UCS manager and go over the two main things you cannot do with the platform emulator. So I'm going to launch UCS manager. And if you remember from the previous video, uh, the username and password is simply admin. I'll move my mouse out of the way. So admin and admin log in. And it'll pop up and let me drag it so that you can see it easily on your screen. So there we go. So now we're in there and so chassis 2, oh it, it's pretty obvious there's a big red box around it and we've got some major or some critical faults rather at the top uh, telling us that something is very very wrong here. So if I expand down to servers, uh, this is the one that has no hardware in it. It's telling me right now discovery failed, and if I click the false state manager, uh, we can see it's uh, no adapters are present. It's uh, in inefficient, insufficiently equipped. Actually, this is the server where I left out uh, an adapter to show that error. 
uh, this other server here is the one where I put in no CPUs, memory, or anything like that. So you can see different ways that it can tell you what the problem is um, by pulling up this FSM or by just going to the general tab and seeing that uh, discovery was failing because it just it has no hardware. You know, you didn't put any CPUs in there. Uh, so, anyways, let's go over those those two kind of missing components. Number one, uh, if you're working with VM effects at all or want to work with port profiles for VMware, now you can build port profiles. You can build uh, dynamic VNix, and I won't go into those exactly. They're pretty in depth, but uh, you can build the actual profiles. You can build dynamic VNix, but you can't actually tether the Usage Manager platform emulator to vCenter. And notice if I uh, basically the steps are first we need this extension to plug a, a basically a plugin into vCenter. The export feature, uh, if we give it a location like my C drive. Uh, I can say OK, and it'll say both that it's successfully exported and there's an error. Now, basically, it's not going to export that XML file that you need to tie a plugin into vCenter. It just won't work. So you won't be able to kind of mess with this section. Now, what I haven't tried is going to a real UCS uh, manager and pulling the extension out of there and then tying the key back to the emulator. My thought is, if it doesn't even have the extension for you to use it in the emulator, it probably won't work anyways. But if you needed it, the extension key to tie it into vCenter is right here. Um, I'm just assuming that's not going to work. Uh, so that that's not really that major, uh, to be honest. The, the the VMware integration piece would be something you could play with when you had a physical system without really harming anything. You could tie it to, you know, a lab vCenter server. And it's really not going to hurt anything with either UCS or the lab vCenter server. But just keep in mind, it's not something you can do with this. The other thing has to do with SSH. So I'm going to cheat here and just uh, real quick open an SSH session uh, using PuTTY to the IP address. There we go. Let me pull this over. So you can SSH to UCS Manager. Um, you can see I just SSH'd right here to the... IP address. So this part does work. The username and password is CLI user. Let me get my mouse out of the way. CLI user. Again, password CLI user. And it will bring you in here, but it tells you right here emulator note, NXOS, and local management are not supported. You can use the local management command, but pretty much it's kind of a zombie. You know, it's kind of brainless. So if I connect to local management on interconnect A, uh, you can tell right here it doesn't look quite correct because it's not telling me that we're on A. And um, if I try to do like cluster um, lead to B, it just executes. Nothing actually happens. The the B doesn't take the lead. So uh, it really doesn't do anything. You can't really use this. Uh, and I don't believe the NXOS even works at all. Yeah, there's, there's, there, there is no NXOS. Normally, this is how you would get into the Nexus commands of the Interconnex. So if you want to play with any of this kind of line command, uh, Magic Voodoo, which when I showed you there, cluster lead B, that's a very typical use case. I would come into the CLI to change the ownership of the cluster. Uh, you can't do that with the emulator. But pretty much everything else in here is in very near full functionality. If you haven't really had it, you know, if, if you're not really learning around with the CLI or messing with VMFX, which again, I don't see a huge demand for that in the lab environment. Usually you'd want to work with maybe building service profiles or building uh, in the LAN tab, very popular. You're building with VNIC templates, building pools, things like that. They all work. There's, there's nothing not functional in that, that piece. Uh, so it's just basically those two kind of major roadblocks that you'll stumble upon. So enjoy your emulator and have fun playing with UCS Manager. Thank you for watching this video. If you found the information valuable, make sure to click the like button. And if you'd like to see more videos on my channel, please become a subscriber. For more articles on technical solutions and home lab building, achieving certifications, and so on, head on over to wallnetwork.com. Thank you.